This story goes that two brothers traveled to Lakeview where they fought for the rights to attach a name to their street gang and they would become one of the largest, most notorious criminal gangs in Chicago. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella pain. Hey, what's up guys? My name's JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, you already know. Subanse a Suburban. We're taking a ride to the north side. What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Gang Life. Yes. I am not gonna lie. If I sound weird, it's because I'm actually sick. I actually got the coronavirus and it's been kicking my ass for the past week. I've been drinking nothing but Pedialyte. I've been sick as a dog, but I'm still here doing what I'm doing because I love what I do. I love doing the research on these organizations, on these gangs, on my city. Simon's Park is a one acre park on the north side of Chicago. It's actually a few blocks down from Humble Park. In 1956, it would be the birthplace to a street gang called the Simon City Royals. Formerly known as a white gang, like the Gaylords, until about the 1960s when they actually started letting some Mexicans and some Puerto Ricans come into the organization. By the 1970s, the Simon City Royals had expanded into one of the lar largest street gangs in Chicago with branches all across the north side. Transforming into an organization, not just your average street gang. Guns for muscle, no pity in Simon City. That's what they said. They were early, early, early members of the Folks Alliance. So some of their members actually sat at the table at the big houses. When I say at the table, it's at the big houses were in prison a lot of the conflicts got fixed right away because they were able to deal with them right at the table in the joint it's different than on the streets simon city royals have fought extended wars with numerous gangs in chicago and are credited to many many murders and they say with very few friends to speak of it is said that no other street gang has killed more of a variety of rivals than the royals their colors are black and royal blue. And like most gangs only utilize one to two symbols, the Royals actually utilize several. But their main one is the cross with the three rays. The three rays representing their three founding fathers. It is called the heart of the Royal legend. So I gotta speak about this guys. So yesterday, the video that I released about uh, TJ's uh, story that was a Simon City Royal just from a different hood so the guy that he shot his name's Earl and he's actually calls it for one of their branches out there um, when I when I was saying that I understood TJ is is not that I understood how like I get how he was being how he was getting people to flip. Uh, money changes people and sometimes it, it changes them into a very bad person or, or good person, it, it could go either way. And sometimes you think that, you know, that's the answer to everything. When I said that I understood him is I understood the pain when one goes into uh, prison at a very young age and experiences and sees a lot of trauma and sees a lot of bad stuff 
Not that I am okay with everything that he, he was doing and how he was acting. I, I'm not looking at that part. I'm, I'm looking at the person inside of him, the hate, the, you could tell that he's hurting in, in many, many ways about different things, you know. He, um, some guy even commented on my thing. I, I hope, you, you said that you're like him, I hope that you didn't get raped and, and if uh, you have watched my story, actually, uh, yes, I was raped as a kid. I, I was raped by my mom's brother several times as a kid. I was very, very young, and it was one of my biggest traumas that I carried into my adulthood that actually made me that person that hated everybody and wanted to shoot everybody and just thought that, you know, life was just nothing. And that's why I used to always believe that that's where I belonged, in prison or on the street and doing shit like that. And if anybody knows Earl, you know, the guy that got shot on the leg, uh, if you guys could please put me in contact with him, that would be great. I would love to sit down and talk with him. Just, you know, get some, just how he how he feels, what he thinks, and, and just everything to change in, in people, because I know he's, he's seen it. And I, like, I love talking to these guys that have been in the game for a while because you, you could feel the growth that they've they've experienced throughout the years of being on the streets and and just you know uh seeing guys come in and out changing because there's a lot of guys that go into prison and actually come out better people and there's some guys that go in there and come out you know shit shit people so i i just wanted to clear that up just because people don't understand sometimes what I'm trying to say. You know, I used to be a very, very different person. Uh, I was very arrogant. I was very full of myself. I was out there on the streets, you know, every Friday trying to find somebody, driving with a, you know, a gun and, and just I, I, hunting. Every Friday I would be out there. Didn't give a fuck about nobody but myself. I was you know, trying to sleep with everybody's girl. Uh, I, I was just, I was a piece of shit. I had no morals, no, no, just no code, no nothing. And sometimes all that pain and all the trauma that you've been through in life, that's the, the person that changes into. That's why it's so important for you to get help. It's so important for you to actually, you know, s get some professional uh, help and, and actually seek out things that will help you get better, whether that's church or AA or NA or, or just going to counseling. You know what I mean? That's the first thing I asked when I got out of uh, federal custody is that I, I wanted counseling as one of my probations uh, things and they gave it to me. So, you know, take advantage of stuff like that and, and just get it done. Do it. You'll see the change in you. If I can fucking do it, you can fucking do it. <laughs> Anyways, big ups to my boy Peanut. You know, Peanut's in, he is in, I guess he's in Pontiac now. He was in Menard, but he sent me this, this painting. This is done, you know, by a brush. All his, all his other drawings have been um, with pen and they're very, very detailed. Uh, my boy uh, Peanut, he is a uh, saint disciple that uh, went down for uh, a murder that, uh, it's a long story, I mean, you can look him up, but you know, um, I got a lot of shit from, from him too because uh, in the shooting, you know, and if innocent bystander got struck and um, I, I told that person that was, you know, giving me a lot of shit about it. Uh, I don't think there's one day that he doesn't, you know, feel guilty about that or is paying for it because when I speak to him on the phone, I, I hear it on, in his voice. And, you know, this is a kid that he he's going to do, I think he has 53 years, you know, and um, he's trying to help out, man. I told him, hey, I need a bunch of paintings. For my nonprofit, you know, I'm gonna raffle them out, and uh, they're gonna be for uh, for my nonprofit. You know, I I I put money on his books. You know, I try to write him emails and stuff like that as as I uh, as I go through the week. But um, if you guys have anybody that you know that wants to start sending some art, 
for my nonprofit. Uh, you know, get a hold of me uh, at my email. And um, yeah, I'll leave his information on, on the, uh, what is that shit called? I'll leave his information on the bottom. So if you guys wanna write them or send them an email, whatever, you're more than welcome. But stay safe from this fucking Corona shit cause this shit ain't no fucking joke. I, I shit you not, like for a week now, I've had like headaches, uh, my, my, I feel low in energy, just, it, it's bad, it's not good, it, 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 it fucks you up really, really bad, so just say, be safe, and if you're sick, stay home, don't, don't give it to everybody, don't be a fucking asshole, you know, stay home, stay away from everybody, luckily, this is how I work, this is what I do, the only thing I haven't been able to do is work out, but I'm dropping some weight, cause I got like diarrhea like a motherfucker, <laughs> that's all that matters. But, yes, today was another episode of Gang Life. Like I said, I'm highlighting most of the gangs that uh, I have a long list. I'm trying to get through them as fast as I can. But it's, it's a very long list and like, uh, you know, just trying to get through it, man. The next one I got is the, e the Latin Eagles and uh, we'll go from there, man. My name's JC. I am Ron the Strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage and remember... You only have one life to live, bro. Live it out here free. Don't game bang. Don't use drugs. Don't don't go to prison. Okay? Be wrong or strong, at least for one day. Remember, we can't change the past, but we can decide what we do from this day forward. I'll catch you guys on the rebound. My face to the sea. Can't come